Welcome to Mac Connections, the podcast. Keeping connected and looking after yourselves is so important during these changing times. We trust the following conversation will provide some helpful guidance. If you have any concerns, please get in contact with staff in the Year 12 team. We want to be able to provide all the support we can. Our patron, St. Mary of the Cross MacKillop, wrote in 1875, May God bless and keep you and give you courage. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast is recorded. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and to the Aboriginal elders emerging. Episode 7, special guest, Miss Jess Barrett. Here is your host, Director of Wellbeing, Mr. Andrew Exton. Welcome to another Mac Connections podcast where we're reaching out to members of the McKillop community just to see how they're travelling during this period of remote learning and to get their perspective on life at home being a teacher and in this case for Miss Jess Barrick being a mother as well. Jess, thanks for coming on board and um, being prepared to share a bit of time. The background, the background noise is fantastic because I think <laughs> it encapsulates life as a mother and as a teacher, how's this period of remote learning been for you both as a mother and a teacher? I don't know if you can hear him in the background at the moment. Yes, Nico? After my meeting, yep. We will, yep. Okay, so <laughs> that's pretty much sums up my experience this time around. Um, the remote learning round one, there was a little bit more flexibility with uh, being a mum, I suppose, in that for those full days of teaching, I put Nico in those daycare days so that he wouldn't have to sit there listening to me teach for 300 minutes. Uh, it's not fair on him. And there's a big sense of guilt sitting here knowing that he's just off screen, uh, you know, wanting my attention. So last time it was a little bit more flexible. This time with the lockdown and the, um, the shutdown of daycare as well for teachers, it's been extremely difficult. Um, I've just had to learn which I don't usually like to do, but I've had to learn to say no. Um, no to extra, um, extra work or extra opportunities. No to Nico when he wants to play Jurassic World, which is now set up in my living room just off to the side on a very colourful rug and I can't see the dinosaurs, so I step on them frequently. Um, yeah, so it's just learning to say no. No to professional things that I feel like I should be able to do and no to uh, sort of maternal things that I feel the, the inherent need to do. So that's been my biggest learning as a, as a, as a mother in this. Uh. Yeah, I was going to ask, um, how have you seen, I'm going to ask a question in a minute about the differences between maybe year seven students and senior students, but how have you, how have you sensed that the students have been in general having to go through it this, because even from my perspective, Jess, I added up the number of physical days that my daughter in year 10 has been at school since March the 22nd, and it's actually 13 days. So how do you think the students have coped with a reasonably sudden second period and a lengthy period of remote learning? It, I feel like there are two distinct uh, ways in which the students have come back, especially into lockdown number two. Um, my year 12s and my year 11s, while a little bit less energetic, they've come back prepared to be taught remotely. They know the ins and outs. They know how to organise their day. There's a sense of flexibility. Um, I know that I learnt a lot in the first round and I asked them for a lot of feedback. So my remote learning too for VCE has shifted to suit much more of their, their needs than my survival. Uh, so that's been really good with my VCE kids. They're not as engaging as I want them to be online, but you know, there's only so much you can ask for in a given day. But I feel like they've come back, while a little bit flatter, uh, expecting, expecting what it is. So that there's no, there's no um, sort of, I suppose, um, withdrawal. They're just there and they're doing what they need to do. I've heard a little bit of feeling overwhelmed with the extended Zoom sessions that are now um, available. But on the whole, I think the BCE kids have come back with a little bit more direction. They have their sacks to work towards. That's so a little bit different. Year sevens they're just they're a little bit lost and it's it's so heartbreaking when half of the time the, t the learning and teaching that happens at year seven is sometimes just how to behave in a classroom or you know how to behave amongst other people or work in a group and those 
learned behaviors that we, I think, assume occurs in a classroom and we don't pay much attention to uh, cannot happen now remotely. So small behaviors, um, even just engaging in classroom discussion, that's something new for them. And so having to do that without having other kids in the room or being present in the room has just been a real uphill battle. So very distinctly different experiences, I think. Now, you're one of those teachers that's lucky enough to teach both at the start of a school, a student's journey and at the end of a student's journey. And um, obviously because of where I am, most of my focus is on senior students and that sense that they're not going to get another year of school. So how do you ensure that they're going to still be able to see this year as being significant and important and worthwhile? But I've also focused on the fact that for year seven students, the transition into their first year of school is so important and sets so much, um, so much connection for the rest of their time. So how do you think year seven students will go going forward with so much of that first year of their schooling and first year of, I suppose, being embedded and immersed in McKillop? How do you think they'll go? I have no worries that they will just work into year eight, get used to our normal expectations, school protocols, you know, life as a year eight. I don't think... I don't think that's going to influence them all that much. They've made some pretty, they've had an incredible year. And I mean, incredible in both sense of the word, in the sense of the negative and the positive. My, my heart and my teaching, um, my teaching philosophy and what I believe a student needs to leave with goes out with the year 12s um, for a year where it's essentially, you get all these, you know, these benchmarks and these, these big life moments. And you get to celebrate them with those around you that, that you love. And that idea of planning for a year ahead of you, that may include tertiary, that may be, uh, you know, apprenticeship, that may be a gap year. Um, while the year seven still have those five years of whatever that looks like, but still at the same place with the same people, the same caring environment and community, the year 12s don't have that. They have that foundation from us initially, but I do really feel for them looking ahead. I don't think it's, I don't think it's hopeless at all but that normal process of planning and developing and, and setting your goals just seems to be a little bit blurry at the moment so so just try to finish this podcast with three questions and they're going to be one answered together and then one answered separately the first one is what do you think if anything have you gained both personally and professionally out of the experience of remote learning and maybe it's just spending time with your son in the background could be one of those. But also, what's the very first thing that you can imagine yourself doing or you've missed that you sort of instinctively do as part of normal life that you really want to do when, when you're able to? Um, in terms of my learning personally, or what I've gained personally, it's that. It's actually having a class where I hear my son playing with a dog in the background and him absolutely having a ball and then still me being able to teach. So having those two very, what I've known to be for the past five years, two very, very separate worlds sort of come smashing together. So that's a definite personal um, gain. And my kids, my students have seen him <laughs> like this all the time. So there's been dinosaurs and helicopters and laughing and singing. And so there's definitely that. Um, professionally, the open dialogue with both, parents and students and so being able to actually say guys I made this how does it work for you now and the year sevens having to actually articulate what works for them and what doesn't and not just being um in the classroom going oh yeah I'll pick it up whatever yeah I'll just ask that person but they actually have to start thinking for themselves that's been a real win um the something, first you, thing, yeah. something you've missed um hugging my mum She's in Geelong, so haven't seen her in a very long time. And the final thing, Jess, I think as teachers, we've needed to become a bit like advisors, carers, surrogate parents, possibly. And we found ourselves trying to reassure and give advice to the students that we teach. What one bit of advice do you think you could offer your students and maybe students who might listen to this 
and parents indeed about this period. This too shall pass. We have seen a lot in history that's gone down. We've seen a lot of people struggle and big global shifts and, you know, the Spanish flu and world wars and all that sort of stuff. And we know that we can come out on the end having learned something, having maybe changed our perspective and being more empathetic, but this too shall pass. And um, Jess, I'm looking for you to do me one big favour to finish the podcast. Can you bring, sure. your, can you bring your son over sure. and get him to say goodbye to everybody, please? Okay. Nico, come here for a minute. Do you just want to say goodbye? Come here. Mama's finished her, her meeting, so you say goodbye. Goodbye. That brings us to the end of this episode. A reminder, if you do need any help, if you have any queries, questions or concerns, please contact a member of the Year 12 team. Be kind and take care.